Hey guys and welcome to this new episode of Time Counters, another episode dedicated to you. And here we are with another fun episode dedicated to your watches and your collections. In short, you would take over from me, in the broad sense, in the metaphorical sense, and show us, you become the protagonists, right? You show all your watches to the friends of the channel and this is a source of pride for some of you, it is something to share with the rest of the world, it becomes in those famous six minutes of fame, right? To which everyone is entitled, I mean, why not, why not, sometimes you see watches, sometimes even fakes, sometimes half-assed ones that you often and willingly propose on purpose because each of us has a skeleton in the closet to show, right? And so you show it willingly, knowing that you are throwing it away with the snap of your fingers. With fun, it happened later, but more than anything it's a past that someone was really convinced they had a great watch and instead they had a carriage in their hands, you understand? So, okay, my job is also to give a bit of a wake-up call, no, to this small ancient world of watches, let's say. So, do you want to hear Santa Claus? Santa Claus, huh? Okay, come on, fire. Oh, Merry Christmas. This Christmas atmosphere is fantastic that fills my heart so much. I don't know how, even the red glasses. Ah, the watch of the day is red too. Haha, <laughs> all red, huh? Today's Longin Hydro Conquest, 41mm case diameter, caliber L519, aka ETA 2892 or thereabouts. And in short, a watch that we really like with the red bezel. From 2014 or thereabouts, one of the latest additions to my collection. Ah, nice, nice. Let's put on our glasses, get our inquisitive little finger ready to blame you, and let's start watching your videos. I'm really curious, come on. Hi Davide, greetings to you and all the fans of the channel. I'm Gianluca from Milan, Milan, Milan. And I'd also like to show you my collection, a collection that I was lucky enough to show you on your channel three years ago. Great, but in three years the little monkey has worked hard, so in fact, very little of the collection that I showed you is left, so I'm going to waste no time. A collection made up of 8 watches. 8. First watch, this Tagoyer Monaco. It's a watch that is obviously not the classic Monaco chronograph. It's the time-only version that Tagoer created for the Monaco chronograph edition. A watch that I find very wearable, 39mm, on my 16cm wrist and it looks great, a nice mix of, in my opinion, sportiness and elegance. I had completely forgotten, honestly, that there was a non-chronograph version, because if I say only time then my friends will get angry because there is the date. So it is not only time, blah 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 blah, you say only time, right? Now it is in common parlance to identify a watch that is not a chronograph, come on, have a bit of mental flexibility. Anyway, I had forgotten about this only time version for a bit and now we are curious about 39mm. Well, more or less the size is there. But how it looks on my wrist will be different from the Monaco chronograph that I can't see it anyway. A bit of a rhetorical question but it could also have surprising implications, you never know. I should try it, you know, maybe it were a little smaller, but. Second watch. A bit of a classic, but a watch I've already seen, the Bull of a Devil Diver. Which I bought for its vintage look, for these very special hour markers that almost look like diamonds, also because they have a very special setting. At first I didn't like it, I almost sold it after a couple of months because it came with a rubber bracelet that I found very stiff and it was very high on my wrist. In the end, I changed the strap, I got this strap code chicky made of rice, I thought about it quite a bit, but in the end, with its straight ends and short lugs, let's say that in the end there's no annoying play between the case and the ends, so in my opinion. It's an experiment, a successful transplant I would say. 
If it weren't for the shine of the steel that is different between the watch and the case, but it's something that's barely noticeable in natural light, so I'm happy with my summer watch. Let's all promote it together. Another well-known piece, the Omega Speed Master Moon Watch, version of the Sapphire Crystal, bought for my 50th birthday, a watch that I was never 100% convinced by after that. Then what happened? After two years it had a lubrication problem, it would stop, it wouldn't hold the charge and the chronograph struggled to turn. I took it to Omega, they provided free assistance because the watch was still under warranty and in three, excuse me, in a month it was back at my house, so very quickly. And in that month that I was without a watch I realized that a lot, aw. Like when you break up with someone, right? And then after a while you say, no, what did I do? Why? Quote, it's the same thing. No, now you didn't tell me. Is the 3861 the caliber of the brand or the 1861? Still under warranty? It could be both. It could be. You didn't tell me. You didn't tell me here just now. The dot overnight is the 3861. Yeah, it's the 3861. Oh, okay. It had a problem. Now, you say it takes a month to get it back. Very fast, but for many people, a month would be enough to make them cry. Oh, hello, Omega took a month to give me my watch back. You have to understand that there are technical and bureaucratic times and blah 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 that it can take a long time, it can even take six months for a service, let's not be shocked, a month is a quick time. So in the end, I welcomed it back with pleasure and I won't part with it anymore. Okay. Another watch, I noticed that I'm suggesting is this Tudor Black Bay 58. Top, well done, beautiful, A. Hey. Watch that I'm fond of because. Like many others, it has accompanied me on some rather important journeys for me. I say that many enthusiasts become fond of watches because they experience them and I was the same with this Tudor. There are some marks on the case, but now I like it like this because. Well, because together we have had some very, very interesting experiences, some very nice trips, so in the end. We have, let's say, grown together. Of course. Another piece that is the result of one of your reviews. I wanted a watch with an integrated bracelet and in my opinion this Airbowl Cup camera at 37mm version. 37 is a beautiful watch that met my needs. It looks great on my wrist. I find this bracelet very original that no one seems to make with this design. Yes. And I got it from Pascali Domenici. And. Nothing, I am very, very satisfied. Satisfied, it is a beautiful watch. Original, come on, by the way, eh. Watch. There it is, another beautiful one. Rolex Explorer. 40 millimeters version. 40, EH. Well, this is the only watch in my collection with a crown, but let's just say that it immediately made me understand the difference between a Rolex and all the others, because the feeling this watch gives even when it's wound, the movement, the wearability on the wrist is truly on another level of watchmaking. So I'm very satisfied with this purchase and obviously, like practically everyone else, I consider it one of the unsaleable ones. Unsaleable from 40, nice. I've had it too from 39 and I can confirm it. I've always said that when you screw the crown in or when you set the time, when you wind it manually, you can feel that it's solid, that there's precision in the couplings, the tolerances, that there's not a single error, they pay attention to everything, you understand? If, if you don't want it to, there's a model that doesn't screw in, stop everyone, go back, no, no, this one doesn't leave the factory, come on, let's fix it. That's a little added value, right? Every watch has something wrong with it, something that has this, that, the bracelet is hard to find here. The penultimate piece, the top. Panerai 8 days and 44 millimeters with P000 movement with see-through case back, 300 meters water resistance. And I really wanted to have a Panerai that was 300 meters, 
that was therefore true to its name, to its origins. Um, this watch has a special story that I'd like to tell you quickly. I tried it on my wrist in a shop in Milan one day, in May this year. Thinking about it, and the next day I had a bad accident and ended up in hospital. Oh, and I stayed in bed for a month, and during that month I started studying Panerai and, remembering the watch I had tried on the day before my accident, I thought that when I got out of the hospital I would buy it to, let's say, reconnect the thread, which I did in the end, I chose this exact model. This is nice. And so this is a bit of its history, a bit of the connection between before and after the accident. I support the first piece. This 40 mm blue long and spirit has just arrived in the collection. It is a really well-made watch that has received several updates compared to the version that you presented on the channel. For example, this one, as you can see, has a butterfly clasp, it no longer has the clasp with the little box that the first Long and Spirits had. No, no, you are getting confused. There are two versions of the Long and Spirit. Even when I got it, there were two versions. There is the prestige version that comes with the giant box and the leather strap is the NATO that has the little box clasp like mine. I have the adjustable little box clasp. Then there is the non-prestige version that costs less and comes without a bracelet or strap and NATO and has a butterfly clasp. Now, some people like the butterfly clasp more and some people like the adjustable box clasp more. Now, personally, I think the box is a bit better for this watch, which is a bit more masculine. It is a bit more masculine, but they already existed at the time. When it came out, the two versions, the butterfly and the box. Well, if I'm not mistaken, mine also has the quick release of the spring bars, which this one and the butterfly one didn't have. I don't want to say it's a bit of a slouch, but I don't remember well. However, it is a watch that despite its rather long lugs, high lag to lag, looks great on my 16 wrist, and I had also tried a 37, I'll tell you, but then it was too small for me, so I'm really satisfied with this Longino. Well. Nothing, this is my collection that greets you with a general overview. Oh, very beautiful, 8 watches. Thank you for your attention, for the rating you want to give me. Love, 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 I give you a high rating, 8 and a half. I'll give you an 8.5 because these are 8 watches that also have the quality of a premium brand, right? There are premium brands, and some brands that are a bit more underrated, like the ones that aren't that famous. Buova is famous, but it's part of the entry level, for example, right? It's all tasteful. Even the Tagoyer Monk over there, that only time watch that has its own reason to be, and it also helps to differentiate itself from the others. All 8.5. All the beautiful, quality watches. And speaking of quality, as soon as you took out the Spirit, I felt like taking back what I said about the Explorer, because the Spirit is another one of those watches that when you unscrew it, adjust it, and screw it back together, everything is perfect. It even winds so smoothly that you say, but that long in Spirit is well made, at 40 millimeters, like mine, because otherwise I wouldn't have it. And it's perfect. It's almost perfect. Come on. Perfect. Let's not go on too long. Perfect. For example, here, if instead of the little box with the little holes it had an ingenious closure, which is long, they would be shorter. There. Perfect. Instead, there are the little holes that from a certain point of view are also pleasing. Even when I bought this Longini Droconquest, I saw its three beautiful little holes. I said, ah, there you go. I've made a real men's watch. The kind that you hammer, the crown that scrapes your hand. Oh, do you understand? But the spirit is really what I wanted to say, how beautiful, how well made, I've gone on a bit, but anyway, congratulations, I renew my compliments for the collection and also for the calm display. But not so, let's say. Next video. Hi Davide, I'm from Piacenza, I'll start right away because I have a few watches, come on. Casio Giesoc, you always have the little light of the collection because in case of war or manual work, it's always useful. Lucina Sack. Always a must-have in your collection, also a Psycho 5. This is a watch that, uh, it was part of a Say 5 collection, 
then over time I only had this one because it was useless to have more, so I bought this one, used, yes, but it's also nice, because Hamilton, are the ones that are a bit more low profile, but I mean, the ones I wear very willingly, spirit of liberty, ah, uh, with this beautiful engraving on the bracelet, ah, uh, this phrase without freedom, life is miserable, a misery, and I have to say it's nice, I wear it well with shirts with gathered sleeves, I like it, Uh, it's a 43, it's not very easy to wear, but I kind of. But now it came back to me, without freedom, life is miserable, and it's obvious, he said it, like, no, nothing, we're about 17 and I mean, so then. Hamilton. Oh, zero. This is a watch that attracted me because of its uniqueness, which I regret, I have to say the truth, what are they? Why don't I wear it? It's really over the top, it's a 46, it's demanding on the wrist, it's practically impossible to read, so at a depth of 1000 meters I don't know what you'll be able to see unless you charge it with light first, obviously. But I liked it, it's made of titanium, black, very, very nice. Let's move on to my small collection, let's say, of inherited ones, I mean, this one belonged to my dad. A Reddit bomb, classic BU merger in gold and I like it, I like it a lot. This one is very elegant, very dressy, I have to say the truth. Edit 2892, I'm 42, I don't wear it that often because it's actually perhaps a bit more of a lady's watch, but I like it, obviously it's just a question of memory, I keep it with me. It's nice, nice, I like it, I like it. Let's move on to an old school watch, as they say, it belonged to my mother, I don't wear this one because it's very, very small. But it's an old dogfish, manual, let's say, well made. I know that many people don't like modern watches because, let's say, they're exorbitantly expensive, but also aesthetically, they've changed a bit over time. This is an old one, it's an old style, right? It also has its original bracelet, so the strap, strap. In short, this will remain in the collection forever. Okay, right? This also belonged to my parents, since it's unisex, they wore it a bit one after the other. It also had this beautiful butterfly clasp that allowed it to be adjusted, no, depending on the wrist. Pretty easy. Sure. I really like the bracelet. There's the bracelet, sorry, the strap. I was trying to change it, but you can't find it in this dark shade anymore. You can only find it in, let's say, light shades that I'm not crazy about, so for now I'll keep it like this. I need to polish it, I absolutely need to fix it up. Nice. Let's move on and see the pieces that I wear more easily and a bit more frequently. Nomos. Nice. Club sport polar in light blue. I like it. And I like it a lot. By the way, despite the very long delivery times, I found it quite quickly with the transparent case back, also because, let's say, one of the things I liked about this watch was definitely something. I've already seen in one of your last videos, you've already shown it to me, right? Like Sikiolina said, but I like it every time I see it, I like it. Then from there to buying it there's always that step, that step that otherwise I wouldn't. But I like it a lot, nice, you know, nice, thin. It looks like it also has a special clasp, a bit of an original design, or am I wrong, it's beautiful. Huh. The story, the mechanism and the manufacturing are very, very subtle, I have to say the truth, and I really like the shape and the bracelet, especially if it competes with other watches that you'll see that I wear more often now. If it competes. One of these is definitely the Long in Spirit 37. Here it is, 37, this one. Uh, in a certain sense is one of my favorites, uh. Even though it may not be the most valuable, it is one of my favorites. Uh. Size, bracelet, mechanism. It's just perfect, in my opinion, as a watch. It's one of my favorites, if not almost my favorite. Uh, gorgeous, what can I say? Uh, I like it. Now let's move on to my favorite watch, which is this one. 
Cartier Santos, Blue Dial. Blue. I bought it in Rome at a paper mill last year, actually a gift from my wife for my 41st birthday. And what I probably would have noticed is that the bracelet is neither the one you see with the blue dial, which is the blue one, nor the steel one, but I bought this beautiful bracelet separately, also from Cartier, in beige leather. Which I think looks great, it's incredibly elegant, it lightens it up a lot. I'm not crazy about the steel bracelet, I have to tell you the truth, this one is the one I wear most often. Omega this is one of my favorites, Aquaterra, 75th anniversary blue that I got this year. I like it a lot, obviously also because of the fact that it has this spectacular case back with this beautiful engraving that maybe isn't as spectacular, so to speak, as the transparent one, but I mean, what a piece, what a piece. It's nicer this way, maybe. Let's move on to the last one which is the last one I bought this month after a long wait. Rolex. Day just. The gust, green dial, sand actually. 2024 peeled by me and I. Have to say that it's a size that I really like, 36. I have always been against buying Rolex, given their current policy, but I got caught up in this. It wasn't an opportunity because it isn't, as you can imagine, but I would say it's the latest arrival. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's all. Thank you very much and keep up the good work. Thank you. It's another nice collection from both the other side eight and a half. Come on, I had to give you a nine. We're like this these days, relax, I don't know. I don't know, it seems to me that you deserve a nine with all these great pieces that you showed us. Because excuse me, give me a second, we started with, well, with Gochin, but we'll skip that one. All the watches are beautiful. No, my mother's likes the Lacut that we like so much. Then we get the Spirit Cartier Santos Omega Quatera and Rolex De Just in 36. You chose the 36 with the smooth bezel and the Oist bracelet. It's the configuration, let's say, the most understated, the one that shouts less, the one that's a little more noticeable. Hmm. Yes, it's nice. I like it, clearly, I like it a lot. Well, I preferred the most showy one there is, let's be clear. Jubilee bracelet, knurled bezel, knurled bezel, steel and gold, poof it really pops. No, but having that doesn't preclude me, for example, from being able to buy an oyster perpetual in 41 to 39 like this one, which looks a lot like this one, the Dejust, right? With the oyster bracelet and the smooth unit. So I could have two watches, two different models. Whereas if I had bought a D just like that, I wouldn't have been able to think about it, right? I don't care at the moment, but when someone wants to buy a nice little watch like that, they can also think about the perpetual. Here, you couldn't because they're very, very similar, the date changes practically, let's face it, that's all, the novel is beautiful, you deserve it, all the water and earth with the closed case back, I like it, I like it a lot. Now I see this one with the closed case back so beautifully sculpted and it makes me want to have the closed case back sculpted, then maybe I look at my Master 300, for example, which has a transparent case back, I see the caliber, I look at it, I say, but it's nice, you understand? At a certain point, one or the other does not make much difference. If someone likes the watch, they like it mainly for the watch, not for the case back, if it is transparent or if it is closed. At that point, however it turns out, right? Except for the Speedmaster, which I opted for specifically to see it, I wouldn't have bought the Speedmaster closed, huh? Okay, come on, EH, passed, the Spirit 37 passed there, we liked it too. It's already the second spirit that we've seen in this series of videos. The first one is 40, this one here 37 with the little box, with the little holes. You saw it there and the crown that is not screwed down. In the 37 it is not screwed down. Okay, come on, we don't understand. Come on, next chapter. Hi Davide, I'm Jacopo, I'm 32 years old and I'm from Venice. Well done. I'm a watch enthusiast like you. Well done. This passion runs in the family. Let's start by showing you the first watch. This Omega Omega Seaster. 
This watch belonged to my dad who one day came to visit me abroad where I live. He took it off and with a smile told me to always carry it with you, which I think is also a way to always have it close to me. As you can see from the bezel, it's used. Well. And used quite a bit because I take it everywhere. I take it to the sauna, I take it to the beach. And even an elegant evening under a shirt, it looks great. Yeah, nice watch. Today we're going to the second watch, which is all about great watches today, huh? This is the third video here, and if it starts off with a bang like this, it means it's the third. Three videos, three that I can't say anything about. I haven't snapped my finger yet for a single piece of crap, but I can't say it's a single piece of crap either. There wasn't even a watch to say, okay, but you with your finger like this. Nothing, now don't disappoint me. You started off with a bang, then you'll go down. Let's hope so. An Omega Speedmaster 1861. I see this watch very often in your format. What can I say? Fantastic. Let's move on to the next one, which is this Oris Mare Nostrum. Oh. I'm one of the bronze ones. I'm one of the lucky 200 to own it. Hi, me too. I didn't like the strap it came with at all, so I went to John Cool Strap. They made me this brown shark strap that I think fits it perfectly. I have a blue shark one. It looks like something out of a movie, huh? Blue shark, but. Let's move on to the next one. This is a Breitlinga. With a green dial. As soon as I saw it I fell in love with it, also because it doesn't have a crowded dial like the other Navi timers. Yes. It has this green that in sunlight almost turns into an intense blue. And purist friends might turn up their noses because the Brighton Navi timer is also in its name, right? It should only be the chronograph version. Hum, that's how it was created, that's how we want it. Then they also declined the time-only version. I honestly don't care about this kind of talk like that. The timer is fine in this version here, time only, since all those scales around it, no, but who uses them, what, I don't even know how, I don't even know what they're for, and not even on the chronograph, but what are they for, nothing, just creating folklore, filling the dial with all sorts of little things. Then I wanted to say that Breitling is not new to doing these things, right? The Breitling Chronomat, which would be the chronograph par excellence, was then also available in a time only version and a GMT version. So it is a company policy to make a model that could only be a chronograph, to then transform it into other versions. And I don't see anything wrong with that, you know. And by the way, the market is also proving them right, it's not that I love its bracelet. Its bracelet is really cool. Cool. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah. I studied this one a lot. Before buying it and I struggled to get it, but I needed a gent. Yeah, for sure. I have this Mega Devil GMT with a coaxial movement. And tell me you bought it because it has the GMT hand that you won't even see soon and not because of the armadillo bracelet there with all those shiny bricks. Tell me if you didn't buy it for the bracelet, because if it had had a leather strap you would have bought it anyway. Tell me a little bit. Try to tell me with your little finger like this. Try it. You needed a GMT. You needed a bracelet that was so beautiful. Well, I know you have one too. Ah. This one with the black dial bewitched me. As soon as I saw it I did everything I could to get it. In short, I'm very happy and the bracelet is so, so great. Let's move on to the next one. E.H. Here we are, it's. A gun chronoscope. Beautiful chronoscope. I have a strong bond with this brand. Jung's, because my grandmother was an employee of. Jung's, Judas, really, on the wrist. It also reminds me a bit of all the things she used to tell me about the various workers, struggles, because Jung's in Judaica, where she worked in Venice, in addition to making calibers, you know, for watches, also made bombs. Yes.
calibers for bombs and explosives. So he told me about absurdities and then about all the various workers, struggles, the various rights. Well, it reminds me a lot of my grandmother, you know, this watch. Cool. Let's move on to the next one. Well, I managed to get this one after so many sacrifices. It's swollen, <laughs> swollen. Sorry, it's a Rolex Daytona just 41 with a blue dial. Gorgeous. I like it here. How gorgeous and I use it. I use it. This one was also my choice. Instead of steel, it's gold. Just like that one, there was also this one, blue dial with a jubilee bracelet and knurled bezel. Knurled bezel and it was one of the two. Then I found the opportunity, so to speak, because I paid less than the list price, yes, that's already something. The opportunity to get it in steel and gold, new and almost new, almost new, so I got it with steel and gold. But I also like it here, even with a suit, and in addition to being great for elegant evenings, it's fantastic. Yes. I managed to have one after all, after all, with so many sacrifices. Well done. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, go ahead. Pump it up again. Santos. Here it is. This one is like my peer, but my friend from before also has it. But here we are repeating ourselves with beautiful big watches. Grow from video to video because there was the digest. There was the digest. There was the digest. Santos there was the Santos. In short, there are a few. E.H. The Speedmaster. There was the Speedum. Ah, but here I am, and I also have one. With the blue dial. I had some doubts about this one because of the rectangular dial. But as soon as I saw it on my wrist I fell in love with it and bought it. Well done. I always wear it when I go to work and it's really fantastic. Nice. Let's move on to the next one. Come on. I needed a Panerai in my collection. I tried the various Radium or 44s and instead found a good compromise in this one which is a 42. 42. With these hands in a tritium-like color above the indices. The only doubt I had was this milky dial and the readability, but as soon as I put it on my wrist, I saw that the hours were very legible, I was able to negotiate the price and it came home with me. Well done. Now white. Now there's the white monkey. I needed it now. Which is this Query Sobrinos? Well done. San Rafael. And how beautiful. This is. As soon as I saw it, I fell in love. It was really hard to find it because they came out this October. I could only find it in champagne or white. But I already had the white Panerai, so I opted for this burgundy red dial. Beautiful. Um, it's very elegant, very elegant. I'm very happy with the purchase and I managed to find it in a jewelry store in Paris on Chrono 24. Oh, and. Even more so because looking at other jewelry stores in Italy on Chrono they only had the white champagne dial and this burgundy red one reminds me a lot of Cuba and it's really fantastic. Okay, my collection ends here. Okay. I'll give you one last overview. Let's put them in order. And now I wanted to show you. Again. Why my girlfriend Valentina started to be passionate about watches. Valentina. Bought this nice little vintage Omega. Dot. And then she had a passion for these moon swatches. That thanks to your channel I managed to make her understand that they were toys. And as a first watch to start a serious collection for her. I recommended her. Wow. We went to the store together and she liked this to star from Mati. Yeah. Oh. Nothing, Davide. Thank you for the format. I hope you liked my watches. Yeah. Love. 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 Third video and third and third collection with big watches.
Big watches, huh, because, well, let's say, for us mere mortals these are big watches. In the sense that we don't have to bother with watches costing 100,000 euros, 200,000 euros, owed horlogery, right? Richard, whatever you like. Well, for us these are big watches, the Speedum, the Cartier Santos, the Rolex de Gust, these for us normal human beings. And you're on a par with the others too. I'll give you a 9, like the guy before, because I can't tell you anything. You two go from the Cuervo and Sovrinos to the Rolex, the Omega, the Santos, Scottier. Well, you can say nothing. All nice watches. Now, taking a quick look, what can we see? Our Navi timer, then you have that beautiful Omega Devil with the brick bracelet and the black dial. I almost prefer it, then as for the structure of the dial I prefer mine with the two small seconds, let's call them that, power reserve and small seconds, but I would have liked the black color better. And you have the black dial. In my opinion it has a lot more contrast than my gray, but I found it, right? Old stock there in the safe like this and imagine if I let it get away because no, it's gray, I don't want it. Give it to me, give it to me. You did well to take it. You just beautiful. White Panerai Santos. White Panerai. Now you put this monkey here of the white Panerai. I didn't think about it. No, sometimes I thought about that blue soleil. No, but it's a bit of a blue soleil for a Panerai. This is a white thing here. Milky white so it almost looks like porcelain. Hmm, we understand each other with these contrasting hands, the contrasting numbers almost 42 millimeters. Then tell me something about the 42 millimeters, but it's automatic, right? Here I am, it's automatic with the date. What should I do? Okay, here I am, automatic with the date. You tell me because I don't know. Okay, but it's nice. It's white at 42 millimeters like this. It could almost be. No, well, we'll see in the future. I don't know, I gave you a 9, my friend, and you deserved it. Well, blee watches, nice display, lucky everyone, in short. Lucky next video. Hi Davide, I'm Giprian. Hi Sep, I'm... Sending you this video from Padua. I'm of Romanian origin. I... Get it. And I've been here for over 20 years. So... I'll try to be as quick as possible. Perfect. If you're already perfect. I'll show you my small and humble collection. I'd start right away with this one. Quartz. So, apart from the quartz, I have to say that you've been speaking perfect Italian for 20 years because there are people who come from abroad. I can think of some American journalists who have been in Italy their whole lives and always have that crooked accent, right? You speak perfectly. Now, I'm sorry I froze the quartz sector, which makes me want to snap my fingers, but like, it's. A vintage style from the early 1950s. With. A 38 millimeters case diameter, which was very popular at the time. Yes. And with gold hour markers, a chrome plated case, and a small seconds dial. I don't know what wind is blowing at 6 o'clock. But it's a nice watch, for sure. It's a nice watch. It looks a bit like a flash. It came out well, too. It looks a bit like a flash. Well, given the G logo. I recently changed this strap here. I put a nice dial on it. I put a brown one on it. It looks good. I think it looks good too. Go on, the dial with those stripes there. Nice, nice. Well done. Let's move on to another vintage watch. This time we have a chronograph. Here at Nice from the 1940s, also a 38mm cased, gold plated. With a spectacular dial considering its age. I say spectacular because I assume it's not reissued. I don't know. I think it's a bit difficult to redo, especially with all these numbers on this dial. Oh, but it did. And that's it. Let's stop there.
For example, you can see telemeter, the T, the E, the R and the E at the bottom are crooked, stuck together. In my opinion, it's reprinted, in my opinion. I don't have any other clues, also because I saw it in person, right? But, well, it's not because there are so many numbers, so many writings and it's not reprinted because it's difficult. Just look at how crooked the word telemeter is in. The dial is beautiful, but the same can't be said for the case back. Hey, it's a shot. It's also gold-plated. What? It's not the classic steel case back, but it's gold-plated and as you can see here the plating has come off and it also has some pieces of material, I would say. I tried to look for a case back, but I couldn't do anything. At this point I don't know if it can be repaired, I've never even asked. But it's not worth repairing, leave it like this, it's not signs of time. It looks like someone did something to it, but there's evidence. Now I'll show you. The fourth watch. Oh. This. Once. A bit of a mess. I gave it away years ago. It. Was needed. Good job. It was needed for the 65. This is the classic, the 65 with a 37 millimeters case diameter and a 7S26 movement, I think. And I wear it every now and then. It's. There. Because I like it. It's nice. Yes. The. Watch is visible. Oh, there's the one that's badly folded. Oh. But she likes it anyway. Huh. Which I like, I mean, it's not that. Now I'll show you another Seiko. What is it? What is it? This time it's a Seiko 5 Sports with a 42 millimeters case. Reference SP SERP 79K1. Oh, with this burnished case. Oh, yes, strange. I really like it. A little artificially aged. Then, I don't know if you can see it, it has this. Beautiful, nice dial. Dot. It has this particular central dial. That I've never seen on the channel, me personally. Me neither. It has a caliber 4R36. Yes, that's known. Here. This one also has the movement. Your view. Nice. It has this leather and rubber strap. It's a mix, I. Had to say it's quite soft. Nice, nice. And I like it. In fact, I wear this one everywhere. I've worn it at the beach, fishing, cycling, everywhere. Everywhere. It's a toot. It's an all-rounder. Totem. Totem. Now I'll show you my latest watch. This is a diver. A nice watch. It's a Yema Superman GMT. Oh, yes. 300 meters depth. It has this gray and black bezel with a black dial. 39 millimeters in diameter. Perfect. I chose this version here without the bezel block. Yes. Which is located right here on the crown. I like it better like this. Yes, 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 yes. EH. EH. It mounts an ETA caliber 28932. Ah, yes. This is from 2021. Ah, you can see that they haven't made their GMT in house yet. And this one is practically a numbered edition. They've practically numbered the first 150 pieces. Mine is the 14. Number 14 out of 150. Yes. The bracelet is well made. I wear it very well. Yes, this is perhaps the bezel here. The bezel, yes, excuse me. The crown is a bit protruding with these protectors here. Sometimes wearing it for, I don't know, an entire day can be annoying because it might leave a few marks, but we like it like this and we keep it like this. E-H, mass. There, that's it, that's it. Hello everyone, thank you for posting my video. And see you next time, see you next time, face and love, bye. Peace and love, bye, 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 bye.
And basically, come on, I have a six and a half. There's a nice vintage one, then the five of two, a dry five and the yema which at this point becomes the highlight of your collection. Nice, there you told me it has the 2893 inside. Probably in, 21 when you bought it, maybe the production even in, 19 who knows, they hadn't yet made the in-house caliber that they have for the GMT version. And this one, by the way, is also nice to look at, huh, without the clasp, as you say, which can be characteristic, it's either you or you hate it, there you go. Either you find it characteristic and identifying or you find it annoying and redundant. And there are two philosophies of life. You chose this one which is cleaner, Yema is nice, I like it just as much as I like the two seconds for heaven's sake, all nice little watches, six and a half, you're promoted, oh, slowly. Then let's see if you can get some other big watches. More, more than you, does your little monkey speak Italian or Romanian? You've learned to speak Italian. Because this is the point, because if he's learned to speak Italian and listen, it's a mess because as soon as he listens, he'll start choosing watches. Be careful, I think it's better if you don't teach him. No, 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 no. Hey. Where are we? Here. Where do I add? Hey, you see that here. Where you don't speak. Nothing. Koibos. Koibos. It's good for the sea, it'll be good for the mountains too. Ah, of course, well done, bye. Have a... Nice time. Have a nice time. On the snow. Oh, well done. Well done guys, have fun. Oh, bye Davide. Bye to all the friends of the channel. Hello everyone, this beautiful Tissot Sistar from the 70s. I bought it and put this green strap on it to keep with the Christmas theme. Amazing, amazing. And with its knurled bezel, it's perfect for the holiday season. Because it's so beautiful. And that's it, my monkey and I have already sent our letter to Santa, so let's hope we find a nice 38mm watch under the tree. Oh, and it's big. Because the monkey is demanding and you have to satisfy him, otherwise it's a mess, we know that. Hello again to everyone, happy holidays and love. Love, 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 love. Thank you guys for the Christmas cards, for the wishes and for everything else. I thank you so much. It's nice to see people in front of the Christmas tree, in front of the ski slope, huh? Have fun. While we're here, I'm having fun making these videos, watching you. I'm having fun too, it's not a problem, I just want to look at the watches. Like t -Sar there at the end that I've never seen in my life, first time I've seen it. But immediately I heard a regurgitation from Jovanetta who jumped as if to say, Let's see now let's start collecting Tissot Vintage 2 since they're so cute, right? Money flies here, right? E-H. Nothing, come on guys, I thank you for coming this far. Now I have to leave you because I have to go see the kittens on Instagram, so I remind you of the regular appointments which, as always, are whenever I want, as often as possible here on YouTube. Love. Thanks for the candy basket. 